welcome to the guard exile. Now is the time to kick back and prepare yourself for your end game challenges you face with an even smoother, tankier and stress free playstyle. Of course, it's none other than the Wretched Scum Physical Syndicate Operatives Aura Monster. This is the second part of the guard, which is not budget friendly at all. You will be looking at spending anywhere between 50 to 150 exalts for this part of the build. If you have not seen the first part of the guard, I highly recommend that you do to get a good understanding of the build and a general direction that you can take to this version. There will be a link down below in the description or you can click the pop up in the top right hand corner for the first part of the build if you have not seen it yet. So. After trying various clusters, jewels, items and gems, I have come by the best state the build can be in currently. This build deals an incredible amount of damage and the clear is really satisfying. It brings me back to the first days of solo guards clearing off screen while you just keep running and don't forget we are super tanky now meaning we can do any Cyrus, Maven, Cortex, Uber Elder, Shaper or even the Feared. You can chop and change whatever you like as it's a very flexible build, however you can even implement the cold conversion variation with a plus one specs of chest if you'd like. If you are watching this build guide after patch 3.15 Expedition League and the title's patch number has been advanced, be sure to check the description down below for the path of building link that has the build set up with notes and pin comment for changes or updates on the build. Please note that the viability of the build is subject to change as some items, mechanics or skill selections may change in between patches. With this being said, the build can defer from the video, so let's check it out. To my very amazement, this build is solid and able to do any boss or map without any struggles. It has more than triple the amount of damage that the budget version has and we also have more defensive capabilities making us really strong. Offensively, our syndicate operatives are still the focus. To get more damage out of them, we now use awakened gems along with a few other alternate quality gems to further boost our syndicate operatives damage with extra gem levels and more added damage. We are then of course pairing this with even more aura effect from our body armor and shield, further improving the effect of auras on our minions and yourself. Added on to all of this, we also now have a sniper's mark on bosses instead of flesh offering spamming, adding some more quality of life thanks to our animate guardian's boots being windscreen for the additional curse. Due to us stacking up all of our effects, we are able to break the game's sound sometimes as our minions have a shit ton of attack speed. Defensively, we are now able to achieve up to 40% physical damage reduction and 88% to all resistances without a plus 2 to maximum resistances shield. For more physical damage mitigation, we make use of a Watcher's Eye Jewel that gives us 10% to physical damage to be taken as cold and our Helmet Craft with 8% of physical damage taken as fire damage. We also gain some more much needed energy shield from various pieces of gear, meaning we are able to effectively get up to 10,000 energy shield. Plus, we can easily reach 2,500 energy shield regeneration, allowing us to be even more tanky, boy! With our playstyle, it remains the same during mapping to keep flesh offering up at all times and bone armor on your left click button while using your overflowing chalice when it reaches max charges. Also, make sure to keep your buddies nearby using your convocation. When it comes to bossing, we are able to survive almost every mechanic in the game while keeping the boss in our aura range. So, instead of swapping out precision for desecrate, we swap out flesh offering for sniper's mark. By doing so, we are able to apply our predator mark and sniper's mark along with our animate guardian's vulnerability to maximize our syndicate operative secret police dagger's damage. Remember, in order for them to deal the most damage, they should be at a medium medium range from the boss so they project our shotgun effectively tripling their damage. For our pros, it's a 2 in 1 build as we are a boss killer and a speedy mapper, there's no need to have 2 characters for content. The build is able to do all content and all bosses. 
we are able to achieve some insane damage mitigation. It's ridiculously fun and a relaxed playstyle watching everything just die. Aura stacking allows us to reach over 3.5 million Cyrus DPS with our 4 Spectres. In terms of our cons, the build requires a really high investment. It's a minion playstyle which is not desired by everyone as you don't deal damage yourself and it can feel boring sometimes. You cannot do physical reflection as our syndicate operatives will kill themselves instantly and no regeneration maps can be a hassle but they are still doable. Our ascendancy remains unchanged with points in Commander of Darkness, Mindless Aggression, Unnatural Strength, and Bone Barrier. The Pantheon now has a mapping and a bossing setup as well. For bossing, our major Pantheons are Soul of Solaris for the extra 6% additional physical damage reduction and a 20% chance to take 50% less area damage from hits. You must also capture Vision of Justice, Nightmare's Omen and Pesquin which gives us 8% reduced elemental damage taken if you haven't been hit within the past 4 seconds. They also allow us to take no extra damage from critical strikes if we were crit in the past 4 seconds seconds along with 50% chance to avoid ailments caused by those critical strikes. With our minor pantheon, Soul of Tukohama is the best for the 8% physical damage reduction and life regeneration while we are stationary, because we are tanky we aren't required to move around too much. When mapping, our major pantheon is Soul of Lunaris giving us up to 8% increased movement speed and physical damage reduction as there's always enemies nearby. You must also capture Tunnel Trap, the Heart Templar and the Shadow Alchemist for the extra avoidance, attack and spell dodge which also allows us to avoid projectiles that have chained. If you don't enjoy getting stunned on occasion then I recommend sticking with the soul of the Bran King. In terms of the mana, soul of growth cool for the additional 5% physical damage reduction as we often are hit while speeding through maps. Capturing aerobex should be done as it reduces enemies attack speed by 8% that have hit you recently which works well with our aspects of the spider's movement speed reduction. Enjoying the guard exile? Hit that like button and subscribe to show your support for more informative guards just like this one. Our sixth link consists of Ray Spectre linked to Awakened Brutality for even more physical damage and Predator giving us the ability to control what our Syndicate operatives target. We then pair this with Awakened Vicious Projectiles and Awakened Minion Damage for even more damage along with Greater Volley which allows our Syndicate operatives to shotgun all the enemies down giving us our insane clear speed and boss damage. For our gloves, you must still have Purity of Fire, Ice and Lightning socketed here for the extra plus 2 to level of AoE skill gems. An Anomalous Discipline is the best to fill our fourth socket as it grants you and your allies an extra 5% increased damage while on full energy shield giving our minions some extra damage. With our helmet or boots, we use Anomalous Golems for the extra 20% increased buff effect giving us more life regeneration and physical damage for our minions. Then you should link them to an Anomalous Feeding Frenzy which gives our golems 1% percent of damage leached as life allowing them to stay funky fresh. For our boots or helmet we still use flame dash with flesh and stone linked to maim for our blood stance but with a divergent precision that gives you and nearby allies deal 2% increased damage giving our minions a little more damage. In our weapon we use divergent dread banner for the extra impale chance linked to awakened generosity giving our banner an additional level. Our flesh offering remains here but it gets swapped out for sniper's mark during bossing for the extra projectile damage it grants our minions secret please stagger attacks. In our shield, we make use of a Divergent Vitality that gives you nearby allies deal 4% increased damage while on full life for some more extra minion damage. A Divergent Pride allows nearby enemies to have negative 2% to physical damage reduction that stacks with our Animate Guardian's initial Helm of 9%. 
Our vowel haste remains unchanged. In our unset rings, we socket in anomalous convocation in the one, giving our minions extra movement speed, allowing them to be even more speedy. A divergent animate guardian in the other ring for the extra 40% increased life that our guardian gains, making it even more tanky. In the next section of this guard, I will include all the items needed for your animate guardian. In terms of gearing, I want to break down our Animate Guardian's items first. For the Helm, we use an Elder base that has got 9% increased physical damage taken by nearby enemies with as much life as possible, maybe some Chaos Resistance too. We then still make use of a Kingmaker weapon for the Fortify, Crit Multi and Culling Strike which applies to both you and your minions. Next up is our chest where you should look for one that has got Crusader influence for the modifier you have consecrated ground around you while stationary with a high life roll and crafted gain 10% of maximum life as energy shield. For the gloves, you must look for a pair that has the Corrupted Implicit mod curse enemies with vulnerability on hit and life with some chaos resistance. Lastly, the boots are wind screams, so we can apply an additional curse, meaning our guardian applies vulnerability and we can abuse sniper's mark ourselves, giving us even more single target damage. Moving on to our gear setup, however, if you want to know how to craft or choose to rather craft the gear yourself, you should refer to the craft section where I explain how to make all of the gear pieces. Any pieces that you choose to craft, you will want to use perfect fossils on them to get up to 30% quality for the most energy shield possible. Our helmet remains the same with flesh and stone enchant, however now you will want one with high energy shield on it and crafted 8% of physical damage from hits taken as fire damage, so 8% of all physical damage from hits we take is taken as fire damage. This is further mitigated thanks to our 88% fire resistance. The body armor is still a Val Regalia with a lot of energy shield but with Redeemer influence so we get extra aura effect. You will want one that has got a T1 roll to get 25% increased effect of non-curse auras from your skills, further scaling our auras, defenses and damage for our minions. Another option is a plus 1 spectre chest with high energy shield but you will only be able to achieve 87% to maximum of all resistances. So our gloves must still have the plus 2 to level of socketed AoE gem. However, now you will want to look for as much energy shield as possible with dexterity intelligence to fix some attributes and a general higher energy shield pool. Remember that you can also get Vault Gloves with a plus 2 to AoE gems implicit that has the same mods which could be cheaper. For our boots, we get a pair that has cannot be frozen craft and an elevated spectre roll for plus 2 to level of all raised spectre gems along with a warlord's modifier giving us 4% additional physical damage reduction. Any energy shield or movement speed will be ideal to have as well. Remember that you need your enchant of 2% of life regenerated per second if you were hit recently. Moving on, for our bout we use a Stygian Vase still but with Crusader influence so we are able to get increased maximum energy shield and increased energy energy shield recovery rate along with crafted energy shield regeneration while a rare or unique enemy is nearby. This gives us a huge boost to our total energy shield pool and a lot more regeneration giving us a lot more sustain during boss fights. For our abyss jewel we stick with energy shield, chance for minions to blind and taunt on hit, but you should look for one that also has minions deal additional physical damage to further juice up our syndicate operatives damage. The only choice for our amulet is a marble amulet for the extra 1.5% life regeneration. You will want one that has 5% reduced mana reservation of skills with the plus 1 to level of all intelligence skill gems and crafted increased maximum energy shield. Any attributes will be a bonus here as well. For our anointment we stay with the champion of the cause. Our best in slot rings will be un set rings with crusader influence for the increased maximum energy shield and the flat maximum energy shield. You will want hard dexterity on your first ring and on the other one with high strength to fix any attribute requirements. Please note that you will need an open prefix on both rings to craft plus 1 to minimum endurance charges for the extra 8% physical damage reduction allowing us to reach a total of 40% physical damage reduction. Our weapon is one that has got plus 1 to level of all spell skill gems, plus 1 to level of all 
minion skill gems, any minion damage or minion attack speed. Having intelligence on your convoking wand will also give us a more, much more increased energy shield. For our shield, you will want one that a shaper or hunter influence modifier socketer gems have 15% reduced reservation and redeemer influence modifier 10% increased effects of non-curse auras from your skills is a must have. I recommend the shield to have at least 200 energy shield. For our unique jewels, we use a conqueror's efficiency that is now corrupted for the additional 1% reduced mana reservation of skills. The Anima Stone, corrupted for the corrupted blood cannot be inflicted on you implicit. Our energy from within, Fortress Covenant, Unending Hunger and Intuitive Leap remain the same but any corruptions here are welcome. With our Watcher's Eye, you must look for the mod immune to shock while affected by Purity of Lightning still and 10% of physical damage from hits taken as cold damage while affected by Purity of Ice or damage as fire with Purity of Fire or damage as lightning with Purity of Lightning. For our two large cluster jewels, they remain fairly the same. The first cluster will stay the same, however, for our second, instead of feasting fiends, you will want one that is renewal and rotten claws for the extra 5% chance for our minions to deal double damage, giving them a total of 10%. If you can afford it, then you should look for one that has got primordial bond on it as well to further boost your golem's buff effects. For our four medium cluster jewels, all of them should be six points, including our one that has got first among equals and pure aptitude. This is very important in order to reach the 88% to all maximum resistances threshold. Remember, if you struggle with dexterity or strength requirements, you can get clusters that give you strength or dexterity per passive point allocated. With our flasks, they all remain the same and you can swap them out for whatever your heart desires. To make our helmet, you will need a few deafening essences of loathing for the 5% reduced reservation of skills roll and an item level 80 plus hubris base with our enchant on it. Then you will want to spam a few of the essences on it and try to get high energy shield rolls with an open prefix so you can craft on the 8% of physical damage from hits taken as fire damage. With the body armor, you will need an item level 80 plus redeemer vol regalia base. Then use bound and dense fossils in potent chaotic resonators until you hit the T one aura effect roll that has high energy shield rolls as well. Crafting on quality or any extra energy shield will be ideal if you are looking to reach 500 energy shield. To craft our boots you will need outer influence on an item level 85 plus pair of sorcerer boots with our enchant. Then spam bound fossils in primitive chaotic resonators until you land the plus one to level of all raised spectre gems and another outer modifier because we are going to maven's orbit to sacrifice the other modifier for our elevated roll of plus two to level of all spectre gems which is a 50% chance. If you land the maven's orb right to get the plus two then you can move on. If not you will want to start over again. Next you will need a pair of warlord influenced boots that has the modifier 4% additional physical damage reduction. Now you will want to use an awakener's orb on the warlord's boots first then on your outer boots and hope for some energy shield and an open prefix so you're able to craft the cannot be frozen modifier. If you harvest craft them keeping suffix and really rolling prefixes to get an open prefix with energy shield or movement speed will be really helpful. To make our amulet, you will need an item level 85 plus shaper or redeemer influenced marble amulet that has the reduced reservation of skills and a hunter amulet with plus one to level of intelligence skill gems. Next, you will use an awakener's orb on the hunter amulet first, then on the marble amulet and hope for any attributes and an open prefix to craft an increased maximum energy shield. Crafting the weapon is easy. All all you need is an item level 85 plus convoking wand. Then use a prime chaotic resonator combined with shuddering, corroded, jagged and metallic fossils which will allow the wand to have a chance to hit plus one to minion skills and plus one to spell skills. You can harvest, craft, keep prefixes and reforge suffixes to get any minion damage, minion attack speed or intelligence. In terms of crafting our shield, you will need an item level 85 plus shaper or hunter titanium spirit shield with a reduced reservation of socketed skills modifier. Next, you will need any redeemer shield that has the increased effect of non-curse auras from your skills modifier that must be a T1 roll. Next, you will then want to awaken as orb the redeemer shield first, then your Shaper's Spirit Shield and hope for high energy shield rolls or other influence modifiers.
While progressing this build, I found it to be very enjoyable and a true retro scum summoner that absolutely cheeses the game. I cannot be happier with the current build state, and being able to face tank Cyrus's death beam while watching his life plummet was the highlight of the league for me. Also, the fact that running through maps without worrying about anything made me appreciate just how amazing our buddies truly are. Let's hope that grinding gear games doesn't nerf aura stacking further, however, if they do, I have plans to adapt the build. So, in conclusion, this is most likely one of the most stable and fastest minion builds out there currently that is able to map and boss kill which is easily achievable no matter your budget or knowledge of the game. If you found this guide helpful or the next new build you will play then smack that like button and subscribe for I have many more builds planned. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one XR.